And with this video, we are going to be done covering all of these Summer 6 servants, and I think we probably saved the worst for last. I think it is kind of a toss-up between her and Summer Say as to who technically is the worst servant that came out for Summer 6, because... Okita and Kama are obviously very, very strong servants. They're good for farming, and you can generally just get a lot of usage out of them. Then when it comes to, say, Corday, she has like a pretty good niche that you can kind of manipulate freely because you just got to smack people with the skill seal, and then you get that free damage. Anastasia is just a really good DPS servant in general. She's kind of got everything that you would want in a DPS. Decent enough damage, good battery. Say, on the other hand, is kind of lacking things like a card buff, but hey, at least she is a Berserker, so you can kind of use her anywhere. But then Canis just doesn't feel like she really has an identity. And I don't know if that makes sense to some people, but it just feels like there's nothing really special about this unit. Like, does she do damage? Kind of, like her damage isn't bad, but it's not exceptionally good. She doesn't really have a niche, like there's like no damage mod or nothing that you wanna kinda like build up with her or anything. Really, the only thing you're building up is the NP damage on her NP, and that makes her a little boring to use in my opinion. And while I'm sure there will be some people in the comments down below being like, well, you know, I've seen some success with Summer Canis. I thought she's pretty good. I'm not saying you can't use her. Her kit is decent enough. I mean, we're talking about a year six unit. I'd be very hard pressed to find a unit that gets released nowadays that you really can't use. But it's just really disappointing, especially because I know there's a lot of people that were really expecting and wanting this Summer Canis because she's kind of a big deal when it comes to part two. She pops up in like every Lost Belt. And then we finally get our summer version and it's a little bit lackluster. But before we start diving into these details, make sure you leave a like on the video and you subscribe to the channel for that sweet daily FGO content. Yes, your boy is back from vacation. Things are going to be going back to normal. I'm even streaming every weekday again, starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is on my Twitch, which is linked down in the description down below. So make sure you come out for those. Also, in about a day and a half, I'm going to be streaming over on my Twitch the live stream that JP is going to be doing. So make sure you stay tuned for that. It's actually at a nice... 10 p.m. for me, which is very surprising. Normally, the live streams are at like 5 a.m., so I'm hoping a lot more of you guys can actually come out for that. But with that being said, let's start diving into her kit, starting off with her hits. And again, like I was kind of prepping everybody for the beginning of this video, her hits aren't bad. They're not notoriously awful or anything, but they're not super great either. I mean, Three hit arts cards with 0.66% NP gain, that's fine enough. You're going to get some nice refund on that. She can be kind of a nice crit servant as well, not only because, well, she's a writer and they have naturally high star weight, so she can just kind of gather those crit stars for free, but she's got skills that help her out with uh, crit star generation, absorption, and all that good stuff. And so when you do get crits on those arts cards, you can get some pretty decent NP refund back. And the double buster cards allow her to bust her brave chain with her own NP, right? So that's kind of also good if you want to do a very high damaging turn, but there's nothing really super exceptional here. I mean, the quick card is being backed up by a 12% buff because of her riding EX passive, and the arts cards are being buffed by an 8% buff on her passive because of the Sea God's Essence. But again, nothing super extraordinary. They will get you across the finish line. They are serviceable enough hits, you know, and NP gain, star gen, all that stuff. Nothing super crazy. It'll just allow you to kind of use her as a unit and she will function, right? Like she'll be able to, you know, not look too fraudulent, but not also look all that great at the same time. And I feel the skills are very similar because starting off with her first skill, it's kind of just like a whatever skill. She gives the entire party 20% attack for three turns. And your male and unknown gender allies are also going to get a 30% crit buff for three turns as well. So that's like kind of nice. It's a neat little charisma. Unfortunately, she's a buster servant. So you're going to be pairing her with like, say, Koya and Skaya. So she's not going to be getting these buffs if you want to, I don't know, use her as a DPS. I guess you could give this to Merlin if you want to have like DPS Merlin go crazy. And she herself is a gender unknown servant, so she also does get this 30% crit damage. So for herself, a little bit of an attack buff, a little bit of extra crit damage. It's nice, but it's nothing super crazy. And that's kind of been the whole running theme for Summer 6 as a whole. And again, I don't know if it's because Summer 8 was so insane. Like, all of those servants are really, really nice. And then Summer 6, with them being a little bit more tame, it just makes them not feel as good. But even then, you couldn't have stuck, like, I don't know, a 20% battery for the entire party on this thing. Just something along those lines to spice it up a little bit more, because it just feels a little bit lackluster. Like, there's just not a whole lot going on with this skill. Like, it's just not enough, really. And I mean, 
Even branching out to her second skill over here, this is kind of just generic good stuff that she's getting, you know, a 30% arts and buster performance buff, which is good because the buster buff is going to apply to her NP and her buster cards for doing those big buster crits. And the arts buff is going to be nice because she does have the double arts and double buster deck. And so it's going to improve the damage of those arts cards, also improving the NP gain on those arts cards to make that refund just a little bit better. And then it also bombs 15 stars. Like this is fine enough, but it's kind of just what you would expect in a unit, although I say that and then we just talked about say a couple of days ago and she doesn't have any card buffs at all whatsoever on her kit, so maybe I shouldn't be too harsh on Kanis because she actually got her card buffs, but it's just nice stuff that kind of allows the unit to function. There's no spice or pizzazz going on here. There's nothing that's really wowing me about the servant because it's just stuff that they probably should have. I mean, yeah, you could point out that, hey, it's nice that she's got the 20% attack buff and she's got the card buffs on her second skill. Those are going to multiply into each other to give her extra damage, but at the end of the day, that's kind of standard now around this time. Like most servants are able to double or triple buff themselves with like, say, a damage mod plus attack buff plus card buff, right? And then it maybe if they're lucky, they also get like an NP damage buff so they can quad buff themselves. And so I'm like double buffing yourself. I don't know if I'm really going to be giving a lot of praise for that when that's kind of standard right now. Now, her third skill is a little bit interesting and I think does help her out a little bit as a DPS because it does give her survivability and a guts, which is nice, because if you're using her with Koya and Skaya, she's not getting any survivability at all whatsoever. Koya and Skaya is completely DPS oriented, and she does not keep your people around really at all whatsoever. So this is very nice that she can keep herself around. And even if you've got Merlin, Merlin does have the AOE nope skill on his second skill, which is nice. But if you don't have that up, it's nice to also have just a little bit of extra protection for your Canis. So that I do like. Because especially if you're rocking, say, 2030s on like double Merlin or on your Koyan Skies, it's going to have a nice, decent bit of stars always in rotation. I do like that. Unfortunately, the two other effects that I do like, the star weight and the additional 10 stars, are restricted to only being on Waterside Battlefield, which I've been saying this for about the last two years now. I think they should just drop some CEs that just grant you one of the battlefield types. Like, let's say it's like 50% battery that's starting charge, right? Maybe it gives you some card buff, and then it just grants that person permanent whatever battlefield, right? You know, burning, forest, waterside, whatever. Because I feel like skills like this would be a lot better, and units like Canis would look a lot better, because then it's like, okay, she's funding 20 stars every single turn, could also bomb 15 whenever she wants, plus whatever Merlin's dropping on his NP, you know, you just can have a nice circulation of stars going, but I don't know, it's just, it makes me upset when I see that it's like, okay, this unit could be a little bit better, but we're restricting it for no reason, really. It's not like, say, Nemo, where it's got, like, water side plus void space, plus he's also got, like, the super giant damage mod. He's, like, got other stuff going for him. She doesn't really have any other bonus effects going, right? She kind of needs to have stuff like this to be a bit competitive. So I just don't like it when this unit's already not super great or outstanding and then you have something that could make her a little bit better in guaranteeing her star weight because star weight plus her being a rider should mean she absorbs all the stars that should be good enough and then 20 stars every single turn you could have had her be like a really good crit rider but now it's going to be a little bit more restrictive because you're not going to have as many stars and you're not always going to have the star weight and you know maybe your merlin is going to steal some of those stars because he's a caster and their star weight's also not that bad right just naturally because of their class so it just leads to a bit of just conflicting stuff going on and it just makes me a little annoyed to use her right because i want her to be so much better because she reads as like a very generic good just dps writer but in practice she's a little wonky to use and is really only saved by her np i think her np definitely does a lot of the heavy lifting for her because she has three stacks on this thing unfortunately again one of those is restricted to waterside battlefield it's her 20 percent attack stack that i'm like oh this would be really good for long fights because you could build up 20 40 then 60 percent on the third np and you could really start doing some decent damage especially because she's also stacking 20 percent np damage so every time you're firing you're going from like 20 to 40 to 60 that could be really good you have like on the third NP, because you should be able to do three NPs in a row, especially if you got like Kalyan's guy and stuff running around, and you have a decent enough hand, right? Like that should not be all that difficult. And so if you're able to do stuff like that, you could have a really good blowout turn where you have like this 60% NP damage and then 80% attack buff, because keep in mind, she also has this on her first skill, plus like at least a 30% buster buff with her second skill, if not more, because of say people like Kalyan's guy giving her 
bigger buster buffs and all that good stuff she could really have some good turns but instead we're just stealing another stack away from her thankfully she keeps the original canis skill and also stacks crit damage so you know any crits that follow her NP are going to bite and they're going to bite hard because keep in mind with the first skill, this is starting at 80% crit damage. That's getting real close to the Merlin 100% crit damage skill for just a little bit of perspective. And then you fire that second NP and you're over 100% crit damage. You're going to be smacking and laying waste to people. So that's why I'm not super like harping on her for her NP damage not being that high because I think they put a lot into the crits. It's kind of how I imagine Ruler Artoria where she doesn't do a whole lot of damage on her NP, but at the very least, they did give her like this interesting crit niche, right? Where she's got like some decent enough crit damage with Koya and Skaya. You can loop that skill. Plus, you can try to like loop her seconds go to guarantee that she's always going to be showing up with her face card. So she's got a little bit of a crit niche going on. And I can see they want that for Canis over here, but she's just lacking stuff. Like, where's the battery? Where's like a damage mod? Or just give her all of those water side effects for free. And I think she'd be a lot better. But then again, at the same time, we could get a buff for her, you know, whenever, right? Whenever they want to roll out a new wave of different buffs for the Summer Servants. And it could definitely make her a lot better, which is why I want to pose the question to you guys. I know the video title is a little bit mean. It's like, oh, is Canis a fraud? I don't think she's that fraudulent. I think she is a real unit you could use. She's just not the best. She's pretty average in my opinion. But if you could give her one buff, what would you give her? Let me know that in the comments down below. Maybe it's guaranteeing her own water side battlefield buff. And then maybe she also gives herself like a 30 to 50% NP battery. That could also be really good for her to make her a bit more consistent. Maybe you give her a damage mod. Maybe even just buff her NP so it does a little bit more damage with that higher damage scaling. And then maybe you just slap like a damage mod on it or whatever she fires her NP, she gets like 20% back, kind of like Artoria. I think there's a lot of interesting things you could do with this servant, but I think granting herself Waterside Battlefield would help her out a lot because she would get immediate damage from her NP because she'd guaranteed get that attack buff. And it would make her a lot better as a crit servant because the difference between dropping 10 stars a turn to 20 stars a turn, you definitely feel that on units that are able to do that 20 stars per turn. But let me know all that in the comments down below and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace, late guys.